Good morning. This is Todd Sarwell, and it's Saturday morning, and I thought this would be a good time to do another refraction. So um, let's just hop into the refraction simulator. And I think I'm going to work in plus cell today, so let's change it to plus cell. As far as what type of patient I want, uh, once again, I just think I'll take whoever comes in the door. So let's generate a patient, see who is next on the schedule. Let's see. First eye exam, she's doing well. Her dad reports that she is having problems squinting when she, looking at the smart board and looking at her tablet. And let's see, the first thing I notice is vision is 2030 uncorrected. And uh, uh, that could be a little bit of nearsightedness. Although I do note that the near vision is a little decreased too. And if we were just dealing with a little bit of nearsightedness, then you think that near vision could be better. So the fact that that's a little bit reduced might mean there's something else going on, maybe some astigmatism, or maybe we're dealing with a high amount of farsightedness. That's a possibility too. So let's jump in. You know, normally I'd have an autorefractor or I would do retinoscopy on this patient, but uh, for this, uh, for this, we're just gonna do um, refraction starting from Plano and let's see what we find. So we'll start that refraction. This is Donna Claudette, and uh, she's eight years old. So what do we do first? Well, this is a monocular subjective refraction, so let's block off that left eye. Her vision was 2030-ish, so let's, let's just jump down to that part of the eye chart and let's ask her to read the chart again just to make sure that we're uh, 2030. So she read 2030. Let's just see what happens. Can we, can we push her to read 2025? A-R-E-O-T. She's not reading that too badly, so uh, sometimes kids don't like to, you know, push themselves and read lines that they're not 100% confident in, but she does read 2025-ish. So let's just, uh, let's just make sure she doesn't need plus power. So I'm going to say, which is better, one, let's take away, or add some plus, I mean, and, or two, one by far. Read the charge. Okay, she can't see those. So that definitely seems to have blurred her up. Um, I don't think we'll want any plus in there, but let's let's do this again. Instead of hitting these buttons, I'm gonna hit my keyboard keys now. So which is better, Donna, one or two? This one's better. Let's give her some minus now, one or two. This one's better. Read the charge. A-P-E-O-T. So I think that's a little bit better, or maybe it's a, about the same as it was before. Let's keep going. Let's see if we can get her to read all five of those letters. Which is better? One or two? Two is a bit better. Read the chart. A-P-E-D-T. Now she's getting those. Let's see if we can get 2020. Read the chart. T2V square A. So, um, kind of seeing those, but having trouble. Let's give her some more minus. Let's see if any more minus helps. One or two. I can't tell the difference. Okay. And after adding a half to after a minus when she was 20, 30, I don't know if I'd want to go too much more minus than that. It wouldn't make sense to have to add 0.75 minus one if she was seeing 20, 30. It just seems like it would be more minus than she would need. So maybe there's something else going on here. Let's look for some cell. I'm going to go up a couple lines bigger than what she's been reading. Let's flip down the JCC and uh, we'll ask her some questions again. And incidentally, I've said this in the other tutorials, but I really encourage you to talk through these um, talk out loud to the patient if you can. You know, if you're in, the, you're in the library or something, you probably don't want to talk out loud. But if you can find a place to work comfortably, you know, I would talk to the patient. Uh, this is your chance to, you know, ask questions, get responses, make decisions. But it's also your chance to kind of practice just how you talk to the patient. And, you know, the more uh, comfortable you are with that, the easier it'll be when you when you do this in front of a real patient. So, yeah, I encourage you just to um, ask questions, kind of phrase them differently, keep it interesting for the patient. Uh, those are skills that are really, really helpful when you when you get into the real world of seeing patients. So, OK, we're going to look for some cell. And I have to remind myself, we're doing a, a plus cell refraction here. So we're really interested in the white dots. So tell you what. Let's turn this JCC so that we're at 
180 and 90. And uh, let's show her some uh, cylinder power. So uh, which is better, one or two? One looked like garbage, two is a lot better. Okay, so two is where we are now. And since we're doing plus cylinder, we are interested in the white dots, which are at 180. So since our axis is already at 180, let's put some plus sill in there. And since I just added a half diopter plus sill, I want to compensate for that by adding a quarter diopter of minus sphere power. And I think, from what we're seeing so far, I think we're going to like this sill. So I'm going to just work on the axis for a little bit now. Uh, which is better, Donna, one or two? I like this one. So once again, we're interested in the white dots. The axis is at 180. The white dots are counterclockwise. So we're going to turn this counterclockwise. I'm going to go about 15 degrees. Donna, which is better, one or two? Two is a little bit better. So now the dots are clockwise. So we're going to turn back this way. Let's go about five-ish degrees. Donna, which one's better, one or two? They're very similar. Okay, so I think we have the axis down. Now let's look at this power. She might need a half. She might need more or less than that. So uh, now I have the dots so that they're in line with the axis. So the axis is at 11 degrees and our dots are at 11 degrees and 90 degrees away at 101 degrees, I guess. Uh, Donna, which one's better, one or two? They look the same, but two is better. Yeah, those are the kind of responses where you think, okay, just make a choice. Um, but uh, yeah, since you like two, let's put a little bit more plus in there, plus sill that is. Uh, we won't change the spherical equivalent because we had just added a quarter this time. And let's see if she likes it with or without that. One or two. I don't see a difference. Okay. Excellent. And sometimes I'll, you know, if we're just dealing with a quarter, sometimes I'll just show them the quarter. So I'll say, which is better, one or two? One's better. Okay. So she consistently likes that three quarter. Oops. Sorry about my dogs. I think there's a squirrel approaching the perimeter. Okay. Okay, so let's see. Let's go back to that 2020 row. Read the chart, Donna. TZVEA. Fantastic. And can we get the next row? Read the chart. OHF or PNF. So, yeah, she's getting those. Uh, a little unsure of the PNF. That's always tough for people. Um, let's make sure we're not over minus, which uh, I'm going to go to 2020. Which one's better, one or two? One's more distinct. And uh, let's show her a little bit more minus two to see if she likes that. One or two. They're the same. Okay, so I think we could be pretty happy with what we have here. So what's next? Well, we got the right eye done. So let's switch to the left one. Let's close off the left eye. I mean, open up the right eye. I always say that backwards. And I'm going to close off the right eye. And I'm going to have her read the chart. Okay. So 2030-ish again. So I'm not going to make you watch a whole second eye because I know that's really boring. So I'm going to zoom through this, and I'll catch you at the end, and we'll, we'll go over the results. Okay, so I finished the left eye, and results were similar. She took a little bit more sill in this eye, but it was at about you know 180 again-ish. Um, otherwise, very similar refractions, so you didn't miss much. Uh, now, uh, let's see how I did. I'm going to hit finish, and uh, let's see. I uh, was off by one degree on the axis in the right eye, uh, one degree on the axis in the left eye, so... Uh, vision was better than 2020 in each eye and got to her best corrected vision, essentially. So uh, successful refraction. So we'll go to our full report. And uh, same information is here. Uh, visual acuity, 
as we went through the refraction, we got closer and closer to the best vision in that right eye. Same thing should be true with the left eye. So, um, yep, got her down to 2015. And if I look at the spherical equivalent, uh, we started off from it in the beginning, and then we hovered around that spherical equivalent line throughout the whole refraction. So that is what we want. Uh, we should establish that very soon and not stray too far from that during the refraction. And uh, same thing is true here. Uh, just kind of hovered around that line, so we did a good job maintaining the spherical equivalent. So, um, yep, that went really well, and uh, I think, uh, what was her name? Her name was Donna, Donna Claudette. will be very happy with her glasses. That smart board's going to be clear. And since we're correcting some sill, uh, hopefully she'll be more comfortable far and near and, and uh, will make Donna's life better.